Global Inspiration guest this week is very special to me. She is a smart lawyer and she is also a gifted painter. She is currently the Assistant Regional Prosecutor at Regional 11 Prosecutor's Office. Her name is Attorney Ritzel Rabor Polinar. Aside from being a smart prosecutor, she is also a polished and skillful painter and has a lot of exhibitions. In fact, one of her paintings was showcased in a plaque and was distributed to the members of the prosecution's office by the United States Department of Justice. How young was attorney Polinar when she realized that she is gifted in the field of arts, specifically painting? And what are the challenges that she encountered being in the field of law, being married to a husband who is also a lawyer, and having two boys? Before we will proceed to the main interview, I would like to remind the viewers to click on the subscribe button as well as the bell button so you get a notification every time a video is released. This is Jeanette Jordi at Global Inspiration, where you need to be seen, need to be heard, and be an inspiration to the world. Friends, welcome to the show, our special guest this week, attorney Ritzel Robor Polinar. Welcome to the show, Ritzel. Hi, well, thank you. Thank you for having me, John. And thank you also for uh, this honor. It's really an honor to be here. Yeah. So for our viewers who don't know you, can you tell us about yourself, your education, whether you are married, the name of your husband, and if you have kids, and what is your current position? Okay, well, I will talk about myself. Uh, I am Ritzel. You can call me Ritzel. Um, in the Philippines, we can be addressed as Fiscal, Fiscal Polinar, you know, uh -huh. Fiscal Ritzel. Uh, I am a lawyer. I have been in the pra uh, private practice for 18 years before I joined the Regional Prosecution Office and uh, currently holding uh, the position of Assistant Regional Prosecutor. Um, um, I'm married to a lawyer, to my law school classmate. Actually, we have been classmates since grade two. <laughs> grade two classmate na kami. Uh, and then I have two boys. My, uh, my eldest boy is in uh, internship right now in a Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology. And my other boy is uh, my youngest because they're only two. <laughs> Uh, it's also in the college bachelor of uh, science in marketing right now uh, in at Ateneo de Davao. You have been in the private practice as a lawyer for 18 years. Am I correct, Ritzel? 18 years? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 18 years. And now you are in the prosecution's office, the Region 11 prosecution's office as an assistant regional prosecution. Can you share with the viewers what are the challenges that you faced being a lawyer, being married to a husband who is also into the field of law and having two boys? Okay, I think um, part of the challenge no, is, uh, you know, you juggle your role, how you juggle your role as a mother, as a career woman, and as a wife, no, and um, as a mother, I always consider my children in my career decisions, in my career choices. So that is why uh, I was in the private practice for 18 years because I am um, my time is flexible. No, no? hindi ako nakatali from eight to five, uh, eight to five na at saka my boss ako, no. So at least i am my own boss pag private practice and flexi yung time ko i can go to my office and then run to ateneo to have lunch with my boys so okay mga bata pa sila of course you have to be there for them um so that is why when they when they already like grown ups na no i decided because i always wanted to enter the uh, government service kasi i envy their 
ganahan ko sa government service kay they have they can they can um you know they can uh, they can help people and at the same time they can pursue their advocacies and that is possible especially in my office in the regional prosecution office because we have several projects no on uh, on uh, on on abuse children anti child pornography yung mga ganun na mga advocacies so um so that is one one challenge i have um, as a career woman as a mother and as a wife and then my other challenge is the right now since i'm already in the prosecution service my challenge right now is um, how to stay sane <laughs> how to stay sane when you are exposed to the dark side of humanity dark side because you're always faced with criminals of course no and we handle um child abuse cases we handle um cases involving children who are abused who are neglected ganun. and so you are it is traumatic enough that you face this uh this um uh this uh tales of abuse violence you know and then you have and you cannot help it but bring this this you know your work mo you can you cannot help it but bring it at home sometimes so minsan maging planning ka no so that is part of the challenge i think <laughs> so those are the challenges i uh, i uh, i uh, i encounter but good thing i have my own way of distressing myself by turning into my art I agree with you, Attorney Polinar, when you say that if you are your own boss, you can spend more time with your kids, you can more spend more time with your passion in life. And be now being in the prosecu prosecution's office, there are friends that will keep you sane. So do not worry. It is trustful. Yes, it is trustful. But it will keep you sane, your friends and your family members and the community. So just do your best. I consider you, Attorney Polinar, as not only a smart lawyer, not only a smart prosecutor, but also a gifted and a skillful painter. So when did you realize that you have the talent in the field of arts, specifically painting and drawing? And is there any member of the family, of your family, who, are, who is also into the field of arts? Actually, my we we have no artists in the family, but we're into music because uh, when I was this small, my 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 brothers and sisters we are into uh, um, um, piano piano uh, lessons, and it's the classical type, the classical notes. We grew up uh, playing the piano. And uh, our mother, of course, would encourage us always to do whatever we want, what our passion, we can pursue our passion. And I, uh, according to my mom, when I was still small, like kindergarten pa ako, parang kindergarten uh, kid, really toddler pa, uh, she would observe that I would, uh, you know, I would stare at something and then she would observe that I am drawing Nagadraw daw ako on on drawing, imagining that I am drawing in on the air daw parang I, I do like this because I <laughs> parang whenever I look at the person kasi parang gira memorize ko na yung kanya you know when I look at the face of a person I already I already I'm already imagining how I would draw that person <laughs> on paper so siguro ganun yung that's how I react to things. That's how I perceive. I, I, that's how I express what I see or feel. And here around me, I would do like this. Parang nagadraw daw ako on the air. Sabi ni mama, that's according to my mom. And then um, I, I when, when I was already in grade two, uh, I, uh, hindi ko nga alam eh. Sabi ko, bakit gina-display ni teacher yung aking works? <laughs> Uh -huh. Kasi pangit naman yung works ko kasi mas gusto ko yung work ng classmate ko because it's neat. I'm never neat in my in my ano art subjects. Hindi ako neat maggawa, you know? And then but I always say, wala bakit gi-display ni teacher yun. Ang pangit naman yung drawing ko, no? So I think I think 
may already my art teacher saw the potential already kaya alam niya no but yeah. when i was this why I, I i i just know that i want to draw i want to sketch and i don't often go out with friends ganun i always stay at home yeah. sa bahay ako with my mom with my with my cats with my dogs and then i always draw whatever i see before me like Ah, uh, noon, di ba, may mga kislap magazines. <laughs> may mga comics, di ba, at home. Kasi available yan, no, those materials. And I would look at the kislap magazine and and see Sharon Conetta there on the cover. And I would spend uh, the entire night trying to capture the face and get the resemblance of uh, those artistas. Sila yeah. Sharon Conetta, si Marissa Soriano. <laughs> It is baby at nasakpan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just to let you know, Attorney Polinar, I really like the way you paint. It is not, it is not the drawing that I usually see, to the, you know, from the painter. It's it's different, and I love it. So my next question to you is, why, why do you draw? Do you, is that a way of distressing? Is it your passion? Does it give you joy? Why do you draw or why do you paint? Yeah, yeah, it's it's tama ka dyan. It's a passion you cannot contain, you know. You know, sabi ko nga, no, yung wala pa akong alam, yung maliit pa ako. I just, I know, I just want to draw. Parang <laughs> whenever I see nga, di ba, as somebody or when I talk to someone, I'm already imagining in my in my mind how to draw, yeah. <laughs> how to put that 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 face in my paper parang ganun so i think it's a passion you cannot contain yeah. it's a passion i cannot contain inside me uh, um so you like what i've said before i guess it's how i express myself how i uh, perceive things and then uh, articulate it through the visual art parang ganun yeah. so what motiv what motivates you to draw a particular portrait a scene that you have seen on the street? Is it your pensive mood? Or in one way of saying it, what awakens your spirit to draw, attorney? Oh, there's so many things. <laughs> there's so many things that awaken my spirit to draw. You know, when you look at around you, beauty is everywhere, no? Parang, noon nga, I, I, I used to have this series when I was in high school, I think, yeah. The, yung espadrilles, di ba uso yung espadrilles na yung very comfy siya na mabibili mo sa Green Hills, mag-order ka pa doon sa Manila sa Green Hills, no? The espadrilles, I have that. And then, gusto ko yung mga folds-folds ng, 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 you know, it has a character. So, I have this series of espadrille drawings when I was in high school. Ano lang siya, sketches siya, black and white. Uh, so, I see beauty in it. I see beauty in every, uh, everywhere. Well, every uh, beauty lurks everywhere naman eh, diba? So, parang, it's how you see daw, diba? Uh, beauty can be seen everywhere because it's how you see it, no? How you perceive beauty. So, so parang akala natin it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's ordinary, it's mundane, but I want to magnify that beauty that I see. That's yeah. why I paint it. A lot of people who are into the field of arts, they value beauty differently than laymen. We as laymen, oh, the color is yellow, but for them it's this yellow with dots of red and the dots, the little dots of white. So that's the brain of the people in the field of art. So Attorney Polinar, you have been, or you had a lot of exhibitions, and this was, the venue was in, they were in, in fancy hotels, and I would say they are from Grand Regal Hotels and Marco Polo Hotels. And it is overwhelming. I, I was just typing these questions, and I was just like, oh my gosh, it is so overwhelming for her to have her first exhibit. So can you share with us, how do you feel during the first time? Yeah, actually, John, my first uh, solo art exhibition that was in 2011 was a reaction. It is a reaction to to the to the to the loss of a best friend in high school. 
uh, well, uh, she died um, giving birth uh, at 39. Yeah, at 39. And then I suddenly realized na, huh? Kasi napabayaan ko yung, yung, yung arts. You know, uh, I entered law school and then I became a mother. I, I, I raised kids. Wala, nawala yung, yung, yung arts, yung pagiging artist ko. Uh, nawala siya, <laughs> nawala siya bigla, no? So, like years, it was years, decades actually, na nawala ako sa art scene, no? Um, I had my uh, group exhibition before in 1989 that was in Central Bank. I had uh, one uh, five men and a woman show, no? It was... Uh, I was the only lady there, lady painter. And, and then after 1918, and wala na, wala akong exhibitions, whatever, because yun nga, no, parang uh, I entered law school and then I had kids, I raised my children. So nawala yan siya. And then yung, yung, um, the, 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 the death of my best friend in high school, parang bigla akong nauntog, sabi ko, hala, ha? Parang at 39, pwede pala tayong mamatay. Parang ganun. Yeah. Parang, oh my God, we're mortals after all. So yeah. parang, ah, I had to do, I had to do that, that, that something na, that is really my first love and that is the arts. Yeah. So yun, so parang therapy na rin sa akin. Hala, nagpaint ako. Sige, akong paint, you know, to overcome the depression that yeah. I have for losing my best friend. Sige, ako paint dyan, paint. I painted and painted and painted. And you know what? I produced 50 paintings in a matter of... Um, she died in June, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. In nine months, I produced 50 paintings. Yeah. And then sabi ko, I will have my first ex solo exhibition. So I had it in March. So she died in June. And then I just painted in between those months. And then in March 2011, yeah, 2011, I had my first solo exhibition. So I said, Igol ko talaga ito that I will have my first exhibition. And that's it. That's, that is why I had my first solo exhibition. Then after that, ayun na, hindi na ako nag, na, hindi na talaga ako, hindi ko na binitawan talaga si yeah. arts. Yeah. So, <laughs> Yeah, you, you, you say, attorney, na nawala. But I would say you did not nawala, not tulog. I would say that your, your presence yeah. in the world of arts, just take a break. But you are still there. Your mind is still there, but you just took a break because of college of law, because of motherhood, because of other priorities in life. And, yes. and so how do you feel when you had your first solo art exhibit. Do you feel overwhelmed? Do you feel good? Yeah. Oh, oh, overwhelmed is another statement. It, I feel accomplished. Yeah, accomplished and exalted. Parang yeah. ginyata ang hindi ko nun. Yeah. <laughs> that I was able to accomplish my goal and I was able to target that, um, that something. Na. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we, we, we are talking about painting. What is the medium uh, when you paint? Do you use pencil? Do you use watercolor? Do you use paint? Because my husband is also into arts. He does a lot, oh, he does few of uh, dots in a pointillism, so which is also considered to be a medium in painting. So what do you use, attorney? Um, I, I, actually, I grew up um, uh, doing charcoals, kasi yun yung available before, no, charcoal. And then I had oil pastels, and then I also, and then I I uh, had workshop kasi in the Learning Center of the Arts, that's the Ford Academy of the Arts, na, no, yung ka edades, the Ar National Artists edades. Um, when I had a workshop there, I was introduced to watercolor, and then I fell in love with watercolor. And... And I love watercolor until now. Hindi mo siya ma-exhaust. It's a medium that you cannot exhaust. Uh, they, they say that watercolor is the hardest medium, no? And I think it's true because uh, you cannot control the water kasi, no? That is why parang 
every time I do what I call it, can I do this? Can I do this? No, kaya, no? And then it's unpredictable. It's I, I love starting the uh, my work. I, I do not know how to end it or I do not know the ending of this uh, particular piece. Parang ganun. So I think uh, that's the medium that I really love, watercolor. Although I also do acrylic. But recently lang ako nag-acrylic actually, no? Recently lang. Okay. In, in fact, uh, I think it was just in 2012, I think, I, I did acrylics. And then, uh, I also love acrylic. It has its own ano, um, character that I love. And mostly my, my viewers, they love they love my works in acrylic din, no? Yeah. Uh, kaya lang... Um, I always go back to to watercolor kasi it's madal uh, pag mabilisan like busy ka masyado if you're a busy uh, career woman but you want to express yourself you, you go to watercolor because it is portable it is available and it is spontaneous and it's one time siya parang mabilisan siya na magawa mo yung gusto mo magawa yeah. as a means of uh, expressing yourself yeah. so yeah. I think yeah Watercolor is my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any single memorable one? Oh, single memorable. I, I, maybe when I was first introduced in watercolor, my first watercolor painting, that is probably the most memorable ones. But but all my paintings are memorable ones, especially there's a lot kasi dyan, no? No, I cannot pinpoint one. Like like for example, yung uh, paintings of my sons, no? I paint them when uh, when they were still a baby and then when they're in grade school. I have documented those yeah. through my paintings. I have I have their high school look, I have their <laughs> another in college, I have I have it, I have sketches of them a lot. Yeah. So tama ka, no? I I I hindi na wala yung arts kasi even when they were small, like, I sketch ko sila. <laughs> yeah. What is your favorite subject to draw? Because I noticed that you draw a lot of people's portrait, you know, yeah. faces. But is that your favorite subject to draw? Yes, pe people, people. I love drawing people, figures. Yeah. I love, I think I connect to people when yeah. that is my way of connecting to them. I like. Yeah. Although hindi ako masyadong hindi, medyo may pagka anti-social ako eh. Hindi, I don't belong to any organization or anything, no. But but I usually stay at home, no, to draw and paint, you know. But I love drawing people. I love the challenge that I get, especially when when um yung makuha ko yung resemblance talaga. That's the most challenging kasi in portraits in, in painting people no and I don't and I don't use I just do freehand I don't use yung graphs ganyan oh. yung mga yung mga tracing tracing I don't use that yeah. because that's part of the challenge that I want no yung sabi ko nga sa yo kanina I I see this Kislap magazines lying around and I would see the the picture of Charn Puneta I want to draw that I want and he, I don't give up. I don't give up. Kaya mabutan ako ng madaling araw, no? Because I want to really copy the, the, the face. <laughs> and that's a talent that is given to you by God, that no one can take that away from you. And I myself, I salute you, Attorney Polinar, for having, for having such talent, for having such skill, for having such talent. And I know a lot of viewers, especially in Davao City, Philippines, they are interested that you have them painted. How can they reach out to you? Do you have any social media accounts? Yeah, I I have uh, I am active in social media, and I, I I as you can as you can observe, John, I mostly post my paintings, no, my paintings. Tapos yung yeah, mostly then my personal uh, life. I I post paintings there. So my media account. Uh, my, my yeah, I have a social media account in Facebook, and my name there is just my name, Mitchell yeah. Polinar, and I also have an Instagram account. Yeah.
Attorney Polinar, I know you are very busy if you are not lawyering, you're tending your two kids, or you are painting. So if you are not lawyering, you're not tending your two kids, and you are not painting, what else do you do? In one way of saying or asking you a question is, what are your hobbies? Do you cook? Do you jog? Do you run? Do you do yoga? Do you dance? Do you do karaoke? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 that's very essential, no, the physical, uh, you know, the, uh, um, ano. Uh, yeah, I do yoga at least three times a week. Uh, pag hindi talaga masyadong busy sa, ano, sa work, uh, I see to it that I do yoga and then I, um, I write. Kaya lang, write, mostly ngayon, puro legalist, eh, mga pleadings yung sinusulat. But I used to write, I used to write short stories, I used to write essays i used to participate in participate in uh, essay writing contest in national bookstore because <laughs> yeah. libre na certificates and then i i still play the piano but not much na masyado kasi nga busy and then i plantita i am also a plantita no i propagate uh, plants yun especially during the pandemic yun yun yung yun yung ano yun yung kaagaw ng aking uh, art art uh, activities yeah. and then you know when i do the plantita thing there's that mga iring bisaya ko andiyan sila no <laughs> they compete in the yeah. scene so yun i also love doing doing plants but the challenge here in america is we have four seasons so we can only do this yeah the spring and the summer and then they uh, they start to wilt uh, fall and then they die in winter and then they again start to bloom in spring. And like there in the Philippines, you have dry and w wet season. So all throughout the year, they keep on blooming. They keep on blooming. So my next question is very recent, Attorney Polinar. Yesterday, I realized that you design a plaque and one of your uh, painting has been showcased in that plaque. And this plaque was distributed by United States Department of Justice, Office of the Overseas Prosecution Development, and Philippines Interagency Council against trafficking to the members of the prosecution's office. Tell us more about this. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, yeah, and I posted that pala yesterday, tama, no? Uh, we have this project kasi in the in the office it is uh, it is a uh, it is a project initiated by the regional anti trafficking in persons uh, region 11 no, or the RAPF. f um, it is co uh, it is a project called osec wipe out osec means online sexual exploitation of children and wipe out wipe means webinar WIPE is W stands for webinar, and then I stands for uh, webinar for investigators. P stands for P uh, prosecutors, so webinar for investigators and prosecutors against exploitation. So that's the meaning of WIPE out. So it's a project, it's a project by the region uh, that we initiated, and then uh, we, we, we have a partner in this project, and that is US of that. No, US DOJ of that. So, siya yung partner namin. And then, uh, we have this roundtable discussion uh, in, recently in uh, Boracay, you know, in Aklan. And then, uh, they, they kind of requested me to design the plaque that they will be giving up to the trainers. So, I was also one of the trainers uh, uh, in that, uh, in that uh, OSEC wipeout training. Uh, actually, we have already trained prosecutors and uh, law enforcers in Region 10, in different, uh, for, of course, first in Region 11, and then in uh, in in uh, Luzon, and then we also train. We will be training. Uh, we will be training in Cagayan, uh, Region 10, sa ano sa November. That will be in November. So nagiging ano siya naging uh, naging uh, ano na siya Luzon Visayas and Mindanao training no and I was one of the trainers and then the US of that uh, our partner asked me to design the plaque that they will be giving to the trainers and the members of the secretariat no? 
and also to the law enforcers, not only to the prosecutors were given this. Um, so this is the plaque. And then I decided that oh, that's kasi very... usually, diba, yeah, usually yung plaque diba, are just, you know, plaque. It's, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's just a plaque. Yeah. <laughs> now I want it to be a piece of art. So that is why I incorporated my, uh, my painting there. And then I designed this plaque. And then at the back, you can see that um, um, there's a, a, a text here that says the painting is the pla is our creation of the artist ARP Ritzel Polinar entitled Baby It's a Wild World. Oh. Baby It's a Wild World. The title of this painting is Baby It's a Wild World. This was exhibited on my birthday on January 18, 2020. That was my uh the pre-pandemic uh exhibit i had a solo exhibition during my birthday at the marco polo and and ito kasi this 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 child here this painting here it depicts a vulnerable child exposed to the perils of a cyber world ito yung mga squares dyan, yung mga colorful squares that would represent um a pixels of a computer so parang diba uh, this this these children of ours that we protect, that we seek, that we seek to protect, no, in our advocacy project. Um, ito yung ito yung uh, essence ng painting na ito, no. So this is a child, and she yeah. is vulnerable. Parang she's exposed to the outside world. Kaya nga may backpack yeah. siya parang ganun. So when when I yeah when I saw the plaque on Facebook, that it was designed by attorney Polinar. Oh my God! It gave me goosebumps. I was almost teary-eyed because all my friend designed that this, that plaque, and it was awarded. It was distributed by United States Department of Justice. It's a privilege. It's an honor that you design that plaque. Thank you very much, Attorney Polinar, for doing that. Thank you very much. And I stand corrected. It's not only the members of the prosecution's office, but also the law, the law enforcement. At, Attorney Polinar, you are. A smart woman you're a smart lawyer and you are a talented painter you are a supportive wife and a loving mother and I salute you for giving speeches for giving talks and do a lot of awareness programs and talk about human trafficking human trafficking in Davao City Philippines or the Philippines per se and one last question and one last request, Attorney Polinar. You have a very colorful life, a very interesting life. Can you share, please share with the viewers any inspirational thought or messages to them based on your experiences in life? Okay. Um, I always give this advice to young people, no? especially my students in the arts, because I also teach uh, painting to, to young, young people, uh, especially during summers. Kasi pag summer, yun, walang klase yung mga anak ko, so I can teach, I can do teaching job. Uh, I always advise them, kasi meron yung iba, gusto nila yung maging artist din, like me, you know? But sa, uh, sabi ko, uh, I always tell them na, um, you pursue your passion, yeah, that's correct, no? But uh, in whatever stage in your life, you go back to what makes you happy, no? So what makes you happy and alive? So when you're doing, when you're, when you love what you're doing, it shows kasi eh, di ba? It shows. And then I, I also, I also tell my my students na kaya nga itong mga itong mga 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 parents nila gusto nila ma-enroll daw sa akin kay para daw ma-advise na I I want them teacher to grow up like you yung artist ka at the same time daw ano yung yung lawyer <laughs> Ganun say so I always advise them na yes you pursue your passion like me I want I want, I, I just want to be an artist yan lang talaga yung gusto ko no and then but but then again I was I was thinking kasi na parang if I pursue my passion and what if what if uh you know I I want I want a fallback parang ganun parang what if hindi ako mag-succeed ganun or or I know I can pursue this passion I can ma-feed ko kayo yung family ko if I just you know pursue the arts parang ganun so like 
you have a backup plan parang at the same time you you artist ka pero pero you should have a profession too parang ganun but well, that's that's just me ha i'm not saying that because i know artists full time artists who are successful of course in their field but that's just me that's how i that's how that's how i led my life and also part of it was my 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 dad kasi is a lawyer din no si attorney rabor yeah. kaya kaya gipatawag kita diyan na attorney Ritzel rabor polina ako because there is an attorney rabor that is my dad and there is an attorney polina that is my husband and i am attorney rabor polina yeah. <laughs> okay and then part siguro na influence ako sa dad ko no that's why i entered law school and then also my my uh, my uh, my my husband now we were classmates in uh, pre pre law school and then they proceeded to law school ah uh, so kaya sige ako proceed na rin no although although uh, law was not my first love because of course art is my first love and he is a jealous lover <laughs> but but i'm always curious i'm always i always love learning i think that's my saving grace i love learning i'm always curious i'm always interested in learning things no and that's i i'm interested in how the 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 legal system works ganon so parang parang of course law school is hard no diba so parang when i entered law school uh, sabi ko nga hanggang first year lang ako siguro hindi na ako mag proceed and then when i when i reach second year ah, hanggang second year na lang talaga ang hirap talaga ng law no and then when i entered third year sayang naman no so i complete ko na lang yung aking course yeah, yeah. so yun uh, maybe it was part of god's plan din no that yeah. i will have i will become a lawyer because i will be pursuing an advocacy and a purpose uh, one of the purpose uh, in in um, in my life is to help this uh, vulnerable children no and maybe it's a uh, payback time i have my profession i can i can i can help people and i have my arts because i can magnify beauty so it's all part of god's plan no ganun no so um so that is uh, wala naman talagang formula in life diba so i cannot i cannot i cannot give you a formula that this is the way to succeed you know so i'm just i'm just trying to 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 tell people how i live my life and then they they get inspired by it so yeah. that's a bonus yeah. yeah um but i think talaga generally is is this is my this is my one principle in life talaga no that in whatever you do you love it and then you you give your best you you should not settle for anything that is mediocre yeah. yan talaga yung isang uh, isang uh, bagay na hindi ko ma-compromise talaga mediocrity yeah. so i think um i don't want to compromise my art you know that is why i have i have a backup plan no meron akong profession because you know when you do arts and then you're dictated by you know by the external factors in life like you need to feed yourself you need to support your family no and then so gagawa ka na lang ng art for the sake of doing it no kasi nga you need you, you should not starve diba so you should support uh, uh, your family and yourself so parang nako-compromise mo yung art mo kasi nga kasi nga uh, wala kang pera ganun you're starving so it's 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 romantic it's it's you know you know how people romanticize it as okay, uh, yeah. an artist starving in a garret diba yeah, yeah. <laughs> ganun yeah. yun usually yeah. diba but but for me you can be you can pursue art and at the same time you can you can uh, you can be somebody that can be an inspiration to help other people and to help uh, yourself practically just give your best in whatever you do you continue to enrich yourself uh we never stop learning ako nga i still enroll in workshops no art workshops because i'm always curious i want to learn and you can yes you cannot stop learning but you can stop and smell the roses yeah uh, because you never stop seeing the beauty of life and 
I always say this, you concentrate on the positive side of life, you know, because life as it is, is already tedious. It is, it is <laughs> challenging. This is how we survive life. Uh, and because uh, eventually we will live this earthly life, we go back to Father God in heaven, and, and, and um, of course, our physical uh, life is just borrowed, our physical bodies are just borrowed. The talents that we have are just borrowed. And it is our knowledge that it, this is all going to end somehow that we strive to leave our mark upon this earth. So please let us all leave a beautiful mark. Again, thank you for your time, Attorney Richel Robor Polinar, giving to Global Inspiration. And thank you very much. This is Jeanette Jordi at Global Inspiration, where you need to be seen, need to be heard, and be an inspiration to the world.